Um, we feel the taxation on the body, but as we discussed already, it's never just the body. It's always going to be this connection between the body and the mind. And it's kind of contradictory to speak about them as two different things. Because as you felt already, moving our bodies in space in different ways, learning new types of movement, it's affecting to the brain. As well as building new neurological pathways and all this, this, this stuff, this neuroplasticity type thing. And we're also building experiences, experiences that we learn from. And this is the idea. For my movement practice, my movement perspective, it extends beyond physical practice. For me, if it's just about physical practice, I'm out. It's not enough. I don't just want a physical practice. I want something that I can learn from. I want something that feeds me in return. I want something that serves me. It's like Marcus Aurelius said of his philosophy. Philosophy is not supposed to be the answer to the problems. Philosophy is supposed to be the soothing ointment when things go wrong. So through movement, when times get difficult, maybe I think, well, I'm not really sure how to solve this problem, or I reacted in a way that I think wasn't in keeping with the way that I interact with my personal movement practice, I can learn some lessons. Let's say, for example, I'm very dedicated with when I do these types of movements with the ball, I can stick to it very well, but then when I'm trying to develop relationships with people or connect with other people, perhaps my methodology is really bad, perhaps I just don't give it much attention and I think it's just going to happen, and I can reflect and think, wait a minute, if my physical practice takes a lot of this learning and understanding and trial and error and time and patience to develop, just as have any worthwhile relationships that we have, then that's something that I can apply outside as well. So, of course it's training, of course it's very tiring, and of course by the end of the day it's, wow. <laughs> this is what I hope when people say, I feel like I've moved muscles that I haven't moved before. That's very cool and very true, and I hope one of those things we're referring to as well is the mental element too. And not just in terms of the things that these movement patterns do, but the reflective element. If you found anything useful from this workshop, don't have to. Don't think, oh, I found, I went to this movement workshop and I don't, I don't think I really got it. There's nothing to get. There is nothing to get here. All I try to do is facilitate a movement experience through which you can explore and you can reflect. As I said, it's about your movement thumbprint. There's no one single correct movement thumbprint. So if something was useful for you, for you here today, I really encourage you to take it away, practice it yourself, find something else in there. There's things there that you will not find and not realize were there until practicing it longer into the future. Because, as I said, they're not in the movement itself. They're not in the ball. Nothing is innately in the stick. But you will change over time. You will change and your ideas towards anything in your life will change over time. For me, this is movement. <clears throat> change is denoted by movement. Change is a condition from one thing, from water, to ice. But what's underlying beneath that? Movement. The atoms move when we bring it to a scientific level, but when we bring it to a more intangible level, our relationships change with people. We have friends in the past that are not such close friends in the future which means that if we wanted to keep them as friends, if it's just we feel like it should, we'd have to make that extra little bit of effort, this extra movement. This is how my movement perspective is, um, but everyone's will be different. Um, if you teach classes, also as well, please feel free to share this material. This stuff was shared with me, and I openly share it with people in return. I don't think that's a crime or anything problematic, um, and I encourage it. The more that we can share the things that we know and just less kind of keep them to ourselves and like, you know, this is a special thing. I hope that we're in an age now that we're more trying to break down boundaries more than set more boundaries up.